Hello everyone. Hi, we have come to the end of the school year and uh, this is term 4 and uh, the exams are just around the corner and uh, well done for for having gone through an entire year of P4 English and uh, today what I'm going to do is that I'm going to run through uh, some parts regarding the paper 2 for the P4 paper and uh, what are some of the things that uh, you should look out for and uh, how you can go about even revising uh, especially uh, for some of you uh, who are uh, trying out some of the practice papers and uh, also for my own students you have uh, the practice papers uh, given to you uh, yesterday uh, before we go for the short break all right so without further ado let's uh, start off with today what I'm going to cover All right, revising for P4 EL paper 2. Okay, the first thing that we need to look at would be what is the format? Okay, so according to the TOS, which has been given out to all parents earlier, okay, this is how the format will be like. And I believe this is quite consistent with uh, the other schools because for the P4 end of year examinations, uh, MOE does give us some guidelines to, to how the papers are set. All right, so Okay, the first thing, what is the format? Alright, the first thing would be the grammar MCQ. So there are about eight questions. And uh, for vocabulary, there will be about six questions on words, uh, how they are used. And for editing, for spelling, mm. this is not a exercise where the, 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 as the invigilator will actually read out the words and you write down the exact spelling for the words. But rather, uh, words are actually highlighted and um, they they are misspelled and what you have to do is to, to, to make out what the original words should be and then uh, give the correct spelling all right for the a fourth part will be the grammar close passage that means that you've been given a passage and uh, there will be grammar items to test to, uh, that will be tested all right and the last but not least will be the comprehension open-ended section Alright, coming to the grammar MCQ, as you look at uh, each of the sentences in this first part of the paper, read every sentence carefully, okay, and uh, read every option that's been given to you, the four options, underline or highlight your clues in the sentence itself, okay, some of the questions you can ask yourself is, is this sentence uh, written in the past or the present tense, usually there are some clues around, all right then ask yourself is this asking in the singular or plural and of course if they are collective nouns um, you do be careful that uh, you are not uh, or rather you, you need to be careful that some especially for collective nouns usually uh, we'll use the singular verb and the uh, third part will be for continuous tense there are words like uh, when for example I was watching TV, I was watching a, pro, a television program when the doorbell rang. Okay, so I was watching when the doorbell rang. Okay, so it tells me that two, two things are going on at the same time, or rather one thing is uh, happening, one thing happened while the other was taking place. Alright, it will change the meaning if you just uh, use the past tense. I watched the TV when the doorbell rang. Do you see the difference? It means that um, when the doorbell rang, then you rush to watch the TV. That will, that will change the meaning of the sentence altogether. Okay, And of course, there are words like now. Um, uh, I am watching TV, uh, the television now. Okay, So if you see the word now, usually, uh, especially in a direct speech, that will be uh, used in the present continuous tense. Okay, fourth point: underline and highlight. Uh, underlining and highlighting is a good practice for checking. Some of you like to do your work a little bit faster, but it is okay. But uh, I notice, especially those of you who completes the paper very fast, you realize that you still have a lot of time. How do you check? One thing you can do is that after you're done, go back to the first, uh, first question again. One uh, each question. Look through all the options, cancel out 
and uh, those those uh, options that you are very certain that is wrong then more importantly ask yourself why do I not accept this answer if you are able to give a reason for that that, that will be good that will make sure that the answer that you have selected is definitely the correct one okay all right let's come to the second section and the third where we have the vocabulary and the editing for spelling okay similarly take out your spelling book especially we have gone through quite a quite a number of spellings uh, what I'll do right now because I believe some of you may have misplaced your spelling books okay and uh, I'll, I'll put a link below here where you can actually uh, download the entire spelling list from term 1 to term 4 okay this would only apply uh, to my students uh, not just my students but rather the, this is the spelling list that we used here in this school all right so take out your spelling book oh one more thing about the spelling list okay there is actually no SA2 spelling list given because the words that will be uh, tested are words that they should have learned throughout the entire year and some of the words we actually uh, use them uh, rather some of these words that uh, are being tested they are directly from what they have already learned throughout the year all right so let's come back to this point take out your spelling book pay close attention to those spelling words which have made mistakes there are some very commonly misspelled words or certain words that you're not too sure so what you can do and this is just a suggestion to see if you wish to take it up create your own special revision spelling list okay so look through the words uh, not just those that you have not uh, gotten them correct but also those that you are, you think that okay I'm not too sure about the meaning especially the meaning of the word put them down in this special spelling list create a spelling list of about maybe 20 words if you need to you may create two lists and either get a parent to help you um, uh, to revise that's mean to test you on it or another way is that write sentences using these words why do I encourage you to write sentences it, it is because it helps you to reinforce and it, reinforce the meaning and you yourself you know how to apply how to use these words in the sentence that's the most important thing about spelling it is not just about spelling itself spelling of the words but it is to help you understand how the words are used in a sentence okay all right as i mentioned some of this in the spelling list will be covered in the vocabulary and editing for spelling section the others will be commonly used words uh, sorry there's a I didn't finish typing that out commonly used words which are uh, you have been familiar in your daily work and also words that you have learned uh, earlier um, uh, in primary one to primary three that by now you should be able you should be familiar with okay I mentioned spelling is not just being able to spell the words but knowing the meanings and using them accurately in a sentence okay grammar close passage same thing read the passage once first do not just start from the first sentence and read as you answer along read through one so that you have a good idea of what the passage is about okay reach read each sentence carefully before answering sometimes the clue can be found in the sentence before the blank or after the blank sometimes it may even appear in the sentence before that or the sentence after that so do read through carefully and uh, look for your clues sometimes uh, you have seen when we uh, revise for the past couple of weeks usually when I go through the grammar clues I will use I'll draw little arrows to indicate oh these are my clues okay you may do that for your checking as well okay coming to this last part comprehension open-ended again read the passage at least once before you attempt the questions and not only that read all the questions once through just uh, quickly look through and then so that you have a good idea the questions are placed in such a uh, order such that usually they, they go according to the to the flow of the whole passage itself of course there are exceptions where sometimes you may need to uh, uh, read through the whole passage and uh, come up with your own conclusion for certain opinion uh, related opinion type questions okay but I'll come to that later 
Okay, read all the questions. As you look at each question, refer back to the passage to find out where you can find the answer. Okay, what I always like to do is to go back to the comprehension question. And uh, I know that, okay, my answer should be able to be, uh, should be found in this paragraph. Okay, then I'll look for the keywords and of course I underline or I highlight them and uh, I put a small little mark. For example, this may be question 35. I'll put a 35 and I'll circle it. All right. And for the next question, same thing. I look at the passage. It's, it is perfectly okay to make your own markings and uh, make your own little notes, highlighting, underlining to make sure that you have found the correct answer or you found where your answer is located in the passage. Okay, the second point is to answer in complete sentences. Except for those questions asking you for just one word. Okay, if uh, it is just one simple square box, or uh, I'm sorry, rectangular box, they ask you for one word, of course you don't have to answer. The word is so and so. Okay, but for the other open-ended uh, questions where you have a long lines that ask you to fill it up, do remember to write in complete sentences. Okay, it is a good practice, especially uh, since we are writing in a, we are, this is an English English language uh, examination. It is always a good practice to write in complete sentences, and be careful of uh, times where your sentences may be too long. Okay, if it's too long, first thing you got to ask yourself: Am I able to to shorten this sentence? That means that you take out information that you may not need. Or you may need to rephrase certain parts but always remember you always need some key points the passage will not ask you to rephrase uh, entirely okay definitely there are some key words and key phrases that uh, would stand out in your question all right the other thing is if it requires a, a really long sentence it is okay to break it down into two sentences all right instead of uh, putting a lot of commas here and there Okay, always remember after you've written, read through once again to make sure that they are the your sentences are accurate. Check for your tenses as well. And the last but not least, for opinion type of question, ask yourself if there is something specific about the character or his his or her actions. Okay, and uh, come up with your own uh, conclusion or your opinions, especially for those uh, questions that ask for your opinions. For example, they may say why, uh, what do you what do you think of this character? How do you think he feel after this? Uh, some, sometimes uh, you have this kind of questions. All right. And um, okay, one last point. Um, the Stella Wood learning sheets have been written to you uh, quite some time back. And uh, you remember at the end of every uh, learning sheet, you remember that I've always given you this uh, small slip of paper for my classes. Uh, on the learning points for each unit okay especially those commonly make mistakes so look through these uh, learning points as you look through your learning sheets uh, ask yourself are you really familiar with uh, these various sections even though they may not come out regardless of whether they come out in the paper or not it is always a good thing to uh, go through and see what are your weaker areas so that we can uh, make small improvement uh, and uh, make sure that we are familiar and we are confident with uh, answering, not just answering, but with this particular grammar or vocab component. All right. Okay, last but not least, I've come to the end of um, uh, the part where how to get started with your English uh, paper two revision for, especially for my students here. All right. Uh, I've, yesterday, I've given you a practice paper. Some of you may have finished some of you may intend to uh, finish it in the next four days where you have where you'll be having a break at home so the pointers that I mentioned just now what you can do is that uh, as you go through the practice paper put it into practice as well okay and um, some of the if you require more practice from the grammar components the vocab components the test paper book uh, test paper for book uh, will be a good uh, revision materials I've uh, skipped certain parts, for example, the graphic stimulus because it is not covered in your examinations as well as the synthesis, sentence combining. But if you, if you find that you have extra time, you would like to just uh, practice uh, on that, it's perfectly fine. 
but I'll advise right now you can actually focus on the grammar, vocab items, as well grammar clues, as well as the comprehension uh, questions given uh, in the book itself. Okay, let's come to this part about planning your time well. This applies not just for this English uh, revision, but also for the other subjects as you plan your time for this four days of break. In, if you include the, the weekend, there will be six days. Okay, revision tips. Very important. Plan. Plan your time. What you need to do, write down on a piece of paper. Put down four columns, or if not, you leave one page for each, each of these days. Plan. Ask yourself, how much, what, what am I going to do for today? Okay, and plan what you intend to revise. If you intend to do English for today, do so. Okay, not just planning on uh, completing revision papers and uh, maybe your parents may have assessment books for you. But plan maybe even time for reading as well. Okay, plan time for, for, for play time as well. Okay, second thing, make sure you have a conducive place to study. What I mean by conducive, it means that it is a place that is quiet enough away from distractions. If your siblings, make sure that your siblings do not come and disturb you when you are studying. Make sure that it's away from your mobile devices. If you get distracted by iPads, your smartphones, your television, make sure that you are far away from that. Okay. When it's time to study, make sure that it is a, it's a nice place and you know that you can focus and pay attention for that particular duration, be it 10 minutes, half an hour, or an hour. Okay, if you find helpful, turn on some light music if it helps you to focus. All right, for, for myself, uh, I, whenever I'm uh, uh, doing my work, be it I'm marking uh, your work, or I, I'm actually preparing for some stuff where I need to focus, uh, I'll, I'll turn on uh, Spotify on the internet. Okay, or on my mobile phone, and uh, what I do is that I go through to go to this couple of playlists: music for concentration, peaceful piano. It helps me focus. It's just playing a little bit in the background. All right. Sometimes, uh, even you can just turn on the radio, ninety two point four FM classical music. Just let it run, uh, in the background. Sometimes it may help you to focus. All right. But some for some people, you may find that music actually actually distracts you. So please just turn it off. All right. If it's best for you. All right, and uh, of course, uh, when we talk about radio, it doesn't mean that okay. That means that you can just turn on any kind of music that you want. Sometimes music, uh, songs, and all this, it instead of helping us, we get distracted. So you have to be very careful of that. All right, and um, third point, plan as I mentioned just now, plan your breaks and play time. It is important, okay, to have a. Uh, sufficient breaks make sure that you drink a lot of water sometimes when you get tired a glass of water may just help sometimes it's just a, when you need a very very short break you just uh, go to the kitchen uh, drink some water look out the window you know sing a song or something like that before you come back okay for for myself mr Liao, i like to move about a lot so usually when i do any piece of work about 10 minutes or so i'll take a very very short break and at the end of my task that I've uh, set out to do, okay, then I'll re reward myself with uh, maybe a slightly longer break. And uh, playtime, yes, not, that, not just indoors, sometimes uh, reading a good book, uh, going outdoors to play, that, that is a good way to recharge so that you can revise better. Also, ensure that you have enough sleep. Do not just keep revising that you, did, that you do not get enough sleep. Okay, sleep is very important. Make sure that you go to bed. Similarly, uh, as you would on a normal school day, go to bed early, uh, wake up early, find the best time that helps you to focus best. Some of you, you may find that mornings, you are able to focus better. Some of you, you find that in the evenings, you are able to focus better. By all means, find the time slot that uh, you are most comfortable with and uh, make sure that at the end of the day, look through the task that you have set out to do. Make sure that um, you are able to accomplish them or most of them if you have been distracted, don't worry. The next day is a new day for you to start anew again. Make sure that whatever you have set out to do, plan and do it well. Okay. If you have not done it well, again, strive to improve. Strive to improve and do better the next time. Okay. Last but not least, let me leave you with this. Remember that it's not just about excelling in exams alone. Okay. This examinations is important. No, no doubt about it. But rather, 
the good habits and positive attitude that will help you achieve much more in life. All right, that's why I stress a lot on the kind of habits that you have, the attitude, the kind of pride that you put into your work. Okay, so do your best for these uh, examinations, and I wish you all the best. And uh, for those of you, for those in my class, for the practice paper, I'll upload a subsequent video, uh, another video to just go through the answers so that you can check it uh, by yourself at home. All right. And the next Friday, when you come back to school, we'll just have one last bit of revision. And the following week, you'll be all ready to go for your year end examinations. All right. All the best and enjoy this break. I'll see you soon. Bye.